Now joining us is the Shadow Home Affairs Minister, Karen Andrews. Karen, uh, we'll start off with The Voice uh, because the government's constitution alteration bill is to be introduced to the House of Reps today. It's another step. There's a few more to take. But what's your thoughts on where it's at today? Well, I think it's very concerning that we have the government of the day and the Prime Minister in particular, who seems to be going out of his way to avoid answering questions on the detail of the, the voice. Now, at this point in time, I think that most people would have some significant concerns about the voice. So the actions of this government have really not given the voice the best opportunity of, um, of being agreed to at the referendum. Now, I think that's a pity, but the government has had numerous opportunities to make sure that it provides the detail, that during question time in particular, uh, the Prime Minister has had opportunity to answer the questions, the, the very legitimate questions that have been put by the Shadow Attorney-General, Julian Lisa, uh, asking for more detail. Uh, the Prime Minister has refused to answer those questions uh, directly and it just means that he either doesn't have the detail or he's not prepared to give the detail to the people of Australia. We've uh, raised issues in relation to legal advice. All of that information should be made available. There is no reason for it not to be made available to people so that they have the information available to them so that they can make a choice on whether to support or oppose the question being put in the referendum. Sounds like you'll oppose it in its current form. There is insufficient detail there and we are seeing the Prime Minister very clearly refusing to answer questions, being, um, being very uh, aggressive in his responses, trying to diminish the Shadow Attorney uh, General, trying to belittle him, trying to de delegitimise the questions that are being asked of him. That is appalling behaviour by the Prime Minister. If he is so strong that the voice is the appropriate way forward, he should be out there advocating for it, providing the details so that Australians have the information to make the decision. So are you against it? There's insufficient detail there. I mean, I'm appalled at the way that the Prime Minister has been handling um, his responses to any legitimate questions that are being asked. He is trying to just wave it away, trying to be the little person who has asked the, the question. I go back to saying, if, if he is so confident that this is the right thing to do, why is he not there advocating, providing all the detail, ask, answering all the questions that have been put to him? Surely he should be an advocate uh, for The Voice rather than just trying to diminish anyone who is legitimately asking questions. Right, but as for the opposition's official position, I mean, is, is, are you opposing it? Is, is that your inclination to oppose it at this stage, Karen? Our position, uh, very clearly, from the Liberal Party is that we need more information. We need more openness, right. more honesty, more transparency from the government. There, there is um, a, an interesting piece that was written in The Australian Today by a Human Rights Commissioner. Uh, the draft wording goes beyond ensuring Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have a right to participate in decision-making that affects them. It inserts race into the Constitution in a way that undermines human rights principles of equality. That's from a human rights commissioner. So, I mean, is that something that feeds into your concern about where it's heading? Do you have those concerns about, about inserting race into the Constitution? Well, it's certainly one of the things that has been raised with me, not directly in, um, in that particular form in terms of race being included into the um, Constitution, but uh, people are concerned that uh, the voice is going to be divisive and it does um, set up quite separate systems here in, in, in Australia for people of Australia, and that is concerning to people out in the communities. And this is where the Prime Minister really needs to come out and clarify the issues that people are concerned about. Not try and belittle them, not try and wave them away. Just come out, be open, honest and tell people what they need to know. Right, a final one here on TikTok, Karen. Uh, delays on banning TikTok from government devices could well be down to not offending China. What are your thoughts on that? Yes. Well, I think if that is true, it is uh, disgraceful. I think that there's probably some other things behind that as well too, which is a tardiness by the minister uh, responsible because uh, we have been calling as, uh, as the coalition for weeks now uh, for TikTok to be banned on uh, government devices. 
uh, the minister responsible has had the opportunity to look at the information, to be proactive, to make some decisions, and that hasn't been happening. And when you actually look at the risks that um, TikTok poses to people in our community, let alone government officials, I mean, TikTok um, can access your contacts, your calendar, facial recognition, uh, voice characteristics, things that are uh, uh, hugely concerning in terms of data collection. You know, uh, keystrokes, I mean, what information is being um, gathered there is just extraordinary. Yeah. Now, the fact that the government has not acted, I think, is appalling. Uh, well, I mean, we've been speaking to you about it for weeks. I've been speaking to James Patterson about it for months too. Absolutely. Yeah, and, uh, there's, there's definitely Absolutely. been Absolutely. I mean, there. what are they... What, what are they doing? And I, and I laugh every time the, uh, the minister talks about a cyber slumber because that's very clearly where she is. Well, and, and just on that, I mean, a few more hacks that have taken place in, in recent weeks. Um, your Ooh. response to the speed with which that's going? Oh, look, there's an increasing number of, um, of, of attacks. Some of those are particularly high volume in terms of the number of people whose data has been compromised and the information that has been uh, accessed. Now, we put um, in as a private member's bill ransomware legislation. The government refused to um, deal with that. They haven't put up any alternate legislation of their own. They just sit there and take pot shots, and it's really just not good enough. Karen Andrews, we'll leave it there. Appreciate your time. We'll talk to you soon.